Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And Hollywood continues to burn. We're going to talk about the strikes and how there is uh, really no movement on any kind of an agreement. And this is according to plan. Lots of people think that the studios aren't going to budge on this until at least fall. Yeah, that's and they're, and they're bragging how much money they're saving. Did a video yesterday. Warner Brothers has saved over a hundred million dollars because they don't have to pay anybody. But uh, I don't think Blue Beetle is going to make a lot of money, no. so they better they better think about what they're going to do going forward. But yeah, there's been some some updates here, and a lot of people thought that we were making some headway getting this thing resolved, and that is not the case. In fact, uh, the WGA is incredibly salty about what uh, Amp Tip came back with and uh yeah we'll see we'll see what happens get some popcorn this is gonna be the most entertainment you're gonna get for months yeah because they're not making anything they're not making anything new um that's good news for some people right some people are like yeah you know, look at star trek i was gonna say look at star you trek don't get any more of that star trek lovely musical episode oh well yeah so let's talk about this before we get into it any further please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants guys if you do you'll get a woohoo woohoo uh, go out to clownfishtv.com for more objective pop culture news. Check out our comics on shopclownfish.com. All right, this is coming from Hollywood Reporter. The Hollywood Reporter. Uh, well, first, we got to go back a day or last night. WGA and Amp Tip can't agree to resume the negotiations. Strike to go on indefinitely. Now, they've already been striking since May, right? Beginning yeah. May. Yeah. So it's it, like this three is months already. Three months. Three very long months. Lots of drama. As of now, as of now, there is no agreement on items on the bargaining table because AmpTip said they needed to consult with their member studios before moving forward, the union said in a statement Friday. So, uh, you know, it's kind of funny because uh, Thursday, I think everybody's like, oh, yeah, I think this is going to be over. This is going to be over pretty soon. And they went and they talked and they're like, yeah, we got to talk to the studios. So they're going to call up, you know, Bob Iger and David Zaslav. And they're going to be like, well, this is what they want, guys. And they're going to be like, Pfft. yeah, not going to happen. Next. Then, then the question is, are, if the writers would get a, an agreement they like, are they going to take it? Because then the actors are still striking and they're supposed to be standing in solidarity. And if the actors get an agreement they like, are they going to take it? Are they going to pass on it because they're supposed to be standing with the writers? Or is one side going to be like, oh, well, you're on your own? You know? Yeah. yeah. So apparently it was leaked to the press first. The press first, I guess. Um, oh, that that goes that never goes well. Yeah, our intention after the confidential meeting was to send a simple email to you all, letting you know we would get back to you when there was more specific information. However, before the negotiating committee even had a chance to meet, our communications department began hearing from the trades, asking for comments on studio leaked rumors of the contents of the confidential meeting. So those studios, they would have been the ones that, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. They're, they're basically telling you you're going you're going to agree to our terms or there's not going to be a deal. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's that's the tr and, and I'm telling you, it's not the raise that they're having an issue with necessarily. It's not even, you know, maybe reining in A.I. The, what they're having the issue with with the writers, in my opinion, is we got to hire 20 people to do the job of five to do the job of five. And that's right. just not sustainable. No, especially when they're cutting shows and they're 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 shrinking streaming because it's not profitable and it's costing them so much money. If they only have 10 jobs, they can't hire 40 people. Ha, I was right. Is that uh, what it is? Yep. This is what they said. That's, that's, that's what I could think though. Cause I mean, a lot of the other things they're asking for aren't unreasonable. They're not unreasonable. Ridiculous. She stated they were willing to increase their offer on a few writer specific TV minimums. Okay. They were willing to talk about AI. Okay. But they were not willing to engage on the preservation of the writer's room right. or success based re okay, residuals. Okay. The success based residuals, I agree with the writers on. I agree with that. I, too. I mean, the, the studios keep so much of the damn money. And, you know, I think that that's not right. And I have been saying this since even before the strike that they've had issues about residuals before. That I, I, I'm on the writer's side about that. I'm on the writer's side about AI. I'm not on the writer's side about we keep four people or 40 people when we need 10 people. Yeah, that you that's know? just for any business that that kills, uh, you know, any any chance for profitability. And like I said, I worked for a company before. It was a printing company, um, publishing company, and it was the same kind of a deal where these guys, the pressmen, decided they were going to unionize, and they were already some of the highest paid in the industry because they worked on national magazines, mm -hmm. and they were living in a relatively cheap 
area, but they were making like really good money. Some of them were making like six figures working, mm -hmm. working for this company. They wanted more and they also wanted more people to be hired. And the boss was like, you know what? I'm just going to cut you all loose. I'm going to sell the company and he can deal with you. And the new owner came in and just cleaned house. Right. You know, because I mean, you can, ha you can't have it both ways. You can have a raise for the people that are there. Yeah. Um, or they could hire, keep your pay the same and have money to hire other people. So you have more help. You can't have it both ways. Yeah. So this is, this is the problem. And, uh, again, and, and this, this instance, I agree with the studios. It's not sustainable to have 20 people working on a show that nobody's going to watch. That only needs gonna, like, you know, a handful of people, a handful, you know, and then you're actually making a case for them to replace you with AI because they'll be like, well, if you're not going to do it, we can't hire all these people. We'll just get, you know, one writer, director, whatever, show work. Because they already made the deal with the Well, directors. they can start doing it now. And the fact is that they keep getting drug out. That's what they're going to do. They're only going to go so long and they're going to be like, okay, fine. They're already hiring AI people to come in and oversee this stuff at the big studios yes. at Netflix and Disney and stuff. You're just, you're just get, making a case for why they can replace you. And that's exactly what they're going to do. I don't think it's right, but I'm just telling you that's what they're going to do. And, you know, devil's advocate here. I know a lot of people think I'm I'm constantly uh, playing devil's advocate. That I, I, I am I the thought devil. you were going to say they think you're the devil. But, I am you know, the devil. They all know that I am. Uh, so, But, uh, you know, from the studio's point of view, if they have a showrunner with the help of maybe a couple of assistants or AI or whatever they're using, and they have one singular vision for a movie or a show where a lot of these things come off the rails is when they have too many cooks in the kitchen. Well, they keep having these shows have a different director each episode and yeah. then you can tell. Yeah. Like this doesn't even mesh up with the last episode. No. None of it makes sense. There's, you know, character development's been walked back or whatever. And I think that's a problem because when you have like shows or movies and stuff, a lot of times people fall in love with the way that it's presented and it's usually one unified vision. But and it, I get the idea and it gets cool, you know, when you want to have multiple people do it, but I don't think it gives the same, I don't know, you can't, you don't connect with it like you would if it was like one you know, unified something and it always felt the same. I mean, not, that does you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I mean, it felt familiar and it was something that you liked. If you keep changing stuff on it, so it's always, you know, in flux, it's going to come across as always in flux. Even, uh, even a lot of sitcoms that were, you know, big in the nineties, for example, friends, you know, or, uh, Frasier, you had the writer's room, but you had a showrunner that was overseeing everything and it was all mostly consistent, but you could tell there were some off episodes here and there. And it was like somebody else was directing them. Yeah. Yeah. And you could tell that it didn't fit with, re but the thing is they were cranking out back then they were cranking out 20 to 26 episodes a season. Now you get like 10. Yeah. It's not you know? new that they do this, but it's just now they're doing it deliberately. Like every, every, see every episode in the season has a different director and they make a big deal about it. And yeah. then you could tell because if they weren't making a big deal about it, they would still try to feel the same. But since they ever, I'm, I'm, it's, I have to put my stamp on this. Everybody knows it's me. And then it always just feels discon disconnected. Yeah, for sure. Disjointed. Uh, so let's see here. Now we fast forward to today. Writers blast latest efforts to resume negotiations, insulting and out of touch. They're not gonna get. They're not gonna get everything they want, and they're not gonna be happy until they get. Nobody they want. does. I mean, there's all. It's, it's negotiations for a reason. Yes, you're supposed to negotiate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so they said that they're in solidarity with SAG after actors. Uh, WGA is not leaving anyone behind. Uh, at least they are. At least they well, are. The actors, they didn't strike until their contract was up. They didn't strike with them in solidarity until the contract. No. Some of them, some of them did, but and most didn't. Some of them are cutting deals right now. Well, that's true. There are a whole bunch of actors, some of them A-listers, working on independent projects right now while the writers can't work. So there's so but much that, for solidarity. Yeah, but some of those writers, if, they're, if they have the shows and these showrunners or their movies and they had to have someone write the script, are they still, and they usually have someone who's still working on it. Yeah. Are they still having people that are in the writer's guild working there though with like a wave or two? I, I don't know. Or they have the scripts locked before. It might have been the scripts know. were locked before. Uh, so this is, yeah, this is this morning. Members of the Striking Writers Guild of America voiced their frustration about the alliance of motion picture and television producers last attempts to resume negotiations following a meeting Friday that was designed to determine if there was a path forward. The Guild informed members Friday, day 95 of the strike, that the talks with a group that represents the studios and streamers produced no agreement. And it doesn't look like there's going to be one anytime soon. Unless they, you know, give up on having 20 diverse people on well, every I mean, damn show. I will agree with them on the residuals. I think that is a, that. I think needs there needs to be, be merit fixed. based. Yeah. I think that needs to be fixed. But I will never agree with them on the writer's room. 
I think that's stupid. I think that's, that's, you know, really, really uh, asking for the moon. I think it's, it's ridiculous. You're asking for job security for a bunch of people that may not warrant you know, being there forever. That's a, it, the you whole, know, the whole, the whole um, thing of Hollywood. It's all gig work. You yeah, work on yeah. this show or this movie or whatever. It's project to project. I mean, unless I mean, occasionally you do get people that have contracts that are there that they're they're, they're well, you'll we'll put you different shows, but you work here with, with us only, and that does happen. But for the majority of people, that is not the case. For the majority of people, you're assigned on for a season or a you know the series or you know one movie or whatever. And it, that's the nature of Hollywood. It's yeah. been like that since before the word gig economy was out. Yeah. And it's always, I mean, how many stories are, it's, it's become, uh, you know, a trope that you've got somebody that wants to be an aspiring actor, director, writer, whatever, busting tables until they get their big right. break and they get something regular. You know? Right. And that, 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 but that's the nature of it. See what gets me, that's what gets me. And it's just a mentality is that because I want to do it now, you need to change it and make it more stable for me because I'm me. And it's like, but you knew going in what the issue, what, what you know, you knew going in, it was gig to gig. You knew that you knew that. Yeah. For most people, I'd say the majority of people, what did you think was going to change? Just because you're there now, it was going to change? Yes. You know, it's, like, it's like if you know someone's an abuser and then you they, you watch them beat up their last girlfriend or boyfriend and then you come in and you start a relationship with them and then you're, oh, I, I thought they were going to change because it's me, you know? Well, I don't know what to tell you. You knew going in. You went in eyes wide open. I don't know what to tell you. He uh he cheated on and divorced his his three other wives. I I'll, it'll be different. I'll be the, this I'll time. Be the exception. I'll you be know? the exception this time. It's like right? you go in eyes wide open. You know how this is. Like the, the the industry's been like that for years. It's been like that for decades. Some people are signed on for multiple things, but most people aren't. It's a gig economy. It's been like I said before the word gig economy was even a thing. That's how it's been. You know that's how it's been. Yeah. So uh, the Hollywood Reporter has reached out. Uh, to the studios, which uh, has yet to comment on the meeting. So many insulting and out of touch things were said in oh, that there's meeting. There's a lot of out of touch to go around. Putting aside the supposedly complex issues, when it comes to pattern issues, suggesting that we would take the same terms the DGA inexplicably took while we're on strike in its fourth month is preposterous. Yeah, because the Directors Guild, they they got what they wanted pretty right damn away, quick. Right away, yeah. Because the studios need the brains, they need the showrunners. Yeah, a lot of times they do the writing too. Yes. So that's what the new Hollywood is going to look like. You're going to have, and the thing is, is it might actually be more coherent to have one or two people in charge of a show with a little bit of help versus having a writer's room because that's where a lot of things come off the rails. You know, we're not dealing with 26 episode sitcoms in 1990. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, it's not, that's not the way things are anymore. Uh, but again, I agree. I agree about the residuals and stuff. That's that's a whole other issue. Uh, they said the DGA got played so badly, says uh, Joe Russo. Yeah. Um, friendly negotiating negotiating tip. Never say the words DGA deal again. Uh, they probably knew what was going to happen if they didn't do it. They probably knew like we know where the studios are. I guarantee you they're like talking to guys like Spielberg and all that. And they're like, here's here's the deal. You know, and Spielberg laid off a whole bunch. He got another deal with Universal and he laid off a whole bunch of people mm -hmm. too. So they got theirs. You guys are the ones that got played. They got theirs. And you guys are still waiting for yours. And I don't think you're going to get everything. Uh, SAG after went on strike shortly after the DGA made its deal. Um, Rob Foreman, a WGA board candidate and lot coordinator at Universal, has seen his fair share of controversy during the 100 day old strike. Uh, what he saw is the lack of movement, starting to get the feeling that amp tip negotiators are not used to being told no, not realizing that writers and actors are told no seven times a day before breakfast. They're cutting the checks, though. You know, we will also seek the right for individual WGA members to honor other unions picket lines as they have honored ours during the strike. Again, I am confused as to why SAG-AFTRA is letting people Letting people film. I don't know. I mean, now. they honored theirs because, like, they would they, these writers would show up at, at, outside of a studio or someplace they were filming, and then because of it, the actors refused to film that day because the, the strike was outside. But they weren't refusing to film every day; just the day the strike was outside. So you know, <laughs> they were still filming. Yeah, when it's, they weren't on strike. There, look, this is by design. You cannot tell me that this was not by design. They took a look at the the landscape. The studios. 
They're like, we have to cut content. We have to curate content. And there's so many people working in this industry now that we hired um, because streaming was like, it looked like this gold rush that was never going to end. And we had certain diversity and inclusion mandates we had to meet. So we hired way more people than we needed. How the hell do we get rid of them and make it look like it's not our fault? Like we can't just mass fire a bunch of people, but we can, we can shake them out during a strike. So we'll just, we'll just do that. That's what we're going to do. This is all by design guys. You want to talk about getting played? You all got played gonna wrap it up mm -hmm. please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants and we'll talk later bye